guys, Lemmy here and welcome back to another art video. Today I'm going to be doing a product review and we will be reviewing Crescent's Render No Show Through Paper. And I'm just going to read how they advertise it off of the labeling. They call it a drawing pad. They said that you can use it with all media. This sketchbook that I have is 8x8 eight eight inches. It is 32 sheets, which is 64 pages because it says that you can do illustrations on the front and back of each paper. Uh, the sketchbook is a hardcover and it is wire bound, though they do have a book binding sort of version available with different size pieces of paper. So you can look into that if you want a different sized sketchbook. And on the back of the tag, it says it is a revolutionary bleed proof paper. Render no show through paper lets you create on every single page in your drawing pad, front and back. Even solvent based markers and acrylic washes won't bleed through. Your drawings are your history, your thought process, your legacy. <laughs> Let render help you preserve them. Fancy. They say it is acid and linen free white heavyweight paper. So that's a little bit about what they claim it to be. So on the very first page, I have written down a few of the items that I'm going to be using to try to disprove this. I have Copic markers, Prismacolor markers, Bombay India ink, watercolor, I believe it's Windsor and Newton brand if that matters, and Deleter ink. Now all of these are black color, so I want to really try to saturate the paper and prove them wrong. I want to make the paper bleed through. Just because I find it hard to believe that there is a paper that you can't make bleed through. Um, that's why I bought it. That's why I wanted to try it out because I really wanted to see if it could do what it claimed that it would do. So as you can see with the Copic marker and the Prismacolor marker, I put the marker down on the paper for at least like eight seconds and before dragging it out towards the right side of the paper just because I really wanted to saturate it with color. And then with the Copic marker I used the colorless blender to kind of feather it out towards the right and really saturate the paper with that because hey maybe that will make something different happen, who knows. Um, and with the watercolor. I used a lot of water towards the right because I really wanted to saturate the paper with water to see if the paper would fall apart or if it would ravel or change shape. And then finally I have some deleter ink at the bottom which is something that I bought for the dip pens that I have because I really wanted to try to do some line art with some dip pens because uh, I never did it before. And I was like, hey, I'm just gonna put that down because it's really dark black. I'm like, I'm gonna try to put that down here with some a paintbrush or something and see if that goes through. Because I think that's out of all of the black that I have there, it is the blackest of all of the black. So I really, really try to get a dark color to show through. So after I get it all over my hand accidentally, you'll see that I, I put a few stripes of it down. Now I let this dry um, completely and then I put it under a stack of books to flatten the paper. And I do this because I wanted to draw on the other side of it, but the file that I took was, uh, it didn't really work for some reason. So I had to do another video to show after I flattened it that you can see ridges. See those lines that I'm pointing at? That is from the lines that I made on the first page. So the paper is a little bit distorted and you can see the lines on the other side. So this is after I flattened it with books and I at this point I want to do a picture on the back and hopefully it will either cover up the lines or it'll kind of bend the paper back in shape hopefully because I saturate other parts of it. I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out what will happen. So I went into the coloring of this picture thinking that I want to treat it like it's any other paper that I would use. Like the bristle board is what I usually use and I wanted to see if it could hold up to that same process that I would use on the bristle board. Even though I feel like the bristle board is a heavier weight paper and it's stiffer. Um, 
so here I'm drawing my character Faye and I picked Faye because Faye has black hair and I just wanted to do a picture with some dark colors and I just wanted to see if anything would go through and you can see right now I am I'm working on Faye herself but the background there is a point where I take the Copic refills and I drip them onto the background of the picture and I completely saturate the picture with the the refills so I do that for the background and after letting everything dry I did check the other side of the paper and it never bled through and I was pretty impressed by that I didn't think it was going to bleed through because of all the tests I did on the first sheet but I really wanted to try to see if anything would go through at all doing what I would normally do on a piece of bristle board because when I when I want a sketchbook I would prefer to have something that I could use my normal techniques on and not have to worry that it would destroy the picture behind it or like not so much the back side of the paper because I don't expect it to not bleed through but I don't want to destroy the picture behind that and with this paper you don't have to worry about the picture behind it or the picture that's on the page behind it because it doesn't go through and I don't know how they do that but it does work and I'm very impressed because it's just something I've never experienced with all the sketchbooks that I have it always bleeds through so that that's something that's interesting another thing to note is that it says it's a white piece of paper but it's not a bright white if I were to look at the bristle board next to the white of the paper it's not as white as the bristle board it's kind of more of a gray tone to it than like a complete white color what I think that this sketchbook would be really good for is if you have ideas or concepts in your head and you want to get them down on paper in a book and you want to kind of work with it and change it and make kind of color palettes and like make swatches and kind of put together an idea that you would like to finish in your head before transferring it onto your final sheet of paper to make a completed finished image and because I say that it's because with bristle board I feel like it's a stiffer piece of paper and it comes it looks more completed and it doesn't have the binding on the right side it's a brighter white color and it doesn't feel like paper this sort of feels more like paper and because of that it feels it feels like you're coloring in a normal sketchbook that shouldn't be taking marker paper and because of that I feel like I'm a little bit nervous about it um, when I use it but I really wanted to see if it would hold up like a piece of bristle board would and it did it, it held the marker very well there wasn't any problems but I still would prefer personally to use this for concepts and ideas and travel on the go sort of things rather than finish pieces. I, I don't exactly know why that is because I can't really explain it. It did handle it very well but I would still prefer to use it for ideas and doodles rather than like a final piece of bristle board that I would display my finished product on. I will say that this is the best sketchbook that I've used for markers on the go. I really do like it. I think they did a great job with the paper. Um, I do recommend it. I, I really do. I think it's great for anyone who wants to use Copic markers or they want to do multimedia using some markers or watercolor, things like that. Um, it doesn't bleed through and it, it's pretty remarkable in, in that regard so it does what it says it's gonna do you guys <laughs> and it doesn't cost more than a normal sketchbook really does so I definitely recommend that you you check out the render no show through paper it's it's pretty awesome so I hope that you guys thought that this was interesting or helpful I did think it was fun to do this and I will be doing some more reviews in the future. I've kind of set myself up to do more of them because I do find them to be fun and helpful. And um, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoy this and I'll talk to you guys really soon for another art video. Okay, bye guys. <laughs>